Hey viewers, welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are doing extremely well. So today we will be uh, again doing one more, I think couple of more problems on recursion. The first one being, we will be learning how to uh, reverse an array using recursion definitely. And after that we will be uh, learning how to check if a given string is palindrome or not using recursion. Now reverse an array. Let's understand. Uh, if I am giving you uh, something uh, like, let's say this, this is the array that I'm giving you and I ask you to reverse this. So the reverse will be definitely something like two, four, three, two, one. I think there's no doubt that the reverse will be this. If you don't understand what is reverse, I can't help. So this is what the reverse will be. Generally, if I ask you to do this using for loop, how will you do this? Very, very simple. You keep a point over here, which is the zeroth index. You keep a point over here, which is uh, one, two, three, fourth index, n minus oneth index. And you basically say swap. And right after that, you move this point ahead and you move this pointer back. And again, you say swap. So it's like this, this is what you do, correct? And uh, at the next moment, you again say move ahead. And if they are, they are at the moment at the same guy and you can say that the left and right half have been swapped hence the array has been reversed so this is how you would have done normally or if you are writing a for loop or while loop so can i implement uh, the same concept i think we can we can definitely implement the same concept so assuming uh, that this is the array given and uh, i is this one right i is this one so there can be a couple of ways to do this. One is I say, I'm going to do recursion using two pointers. So let's uh, first learn to do recursion using two pointers. So I'll be like, okay, let's keep a pointer here L and let's keep a pointer at R. So I swap L and R and that's my recursion task. My recursion task will be to swap and then again call the recursion to swap the next index. Apparently the next index should have been this. So if you logically think it's swap, and call the next L and the before R, right? So if you're gonna think in that direction, I think you can write recursion. Until how long? L, R, L, R, L, R. The moment they cross or they overlap, you're gonna stop, you're gonna say no more, need to swap. So probably I can think of recursion over here. I'd be like, okay, F of L comma R. I know my recursion task is to swap. So the recursion task is to swap array of L and array of R. So they will definitely swap it. Once the recursion has swapped, I know I'm again gonna call the recursion to swap the next elements, which is L plus one and R minus one. Makes sense because I, I'll say recursion, go and swap the next set of guys, which is L plus one and R minus one. But till how long? Can I say the limiting case in recursion will be, if L goes or beyond R or equal to, there's no need to swap and I can return. And I think this is pretty much going to be my recursion. I hope that uh, makes uh, sense. So in order to understand this, uh, we can definitely take a main and assuming you have an array, you can take the input of the array by yourself and you can say F of zero, that's the first index and the last index will be N minus one, which is Definitely the last index, correct? Now, assuming uh, this is the array given, let's assume we take a very simple array. One, three, uh, two, three, not two, three, then there will be a problem, five, four. Okay, let's take this. And uh, first time this is zero, which is going to call this guy. So L is zero, L is over here. R is N minus one, which is this guy which is definitely zero, one, two, or three, fourth index. So this is what we do. This line is not executed. This line of swap is executed, thereby saying swap A of L and A of R. So this guy will be swapped four and one. Next I'm saying F of something, which is F of one comma three. And again, the if will not be executed. The swap will be executed. So L will go here and R will go here this time. So they will swap five and three, correct. Next I'll call f of l, which is two comma two. And thereby when this function goes, 
it's like f of 2 comma 2 if states is this greater than equal to 2 greater than equal to 2 yes return no more swap returned this guy said returned this guy said return so ultimately our entire array was indeed reversed now i i easily did this using couple of variables l and r right but can we do this using a single variable that's my very very straightforward question to you can you uh, do this using a very single pointer yes we can let's understand how so if i again write the same array And if I say this is the ith pointer, which is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and I say n is equal to 5, for this i, this guy is the, this index is what you'll swap it. For this i, this index is what you will swap that with. For this i, there's no more. So something that I can observe is, if this is i, for this, for this guy, the corresponding will be this, and that's nothing but n minus i minus 1. You can try doing this. 5 is n, i is 0, minus 1 is 4. Again, you can try doing n minus i minus 1 over here, which gives you 5 minus i over here is 1, minus 1, which makes it 3. So you can easily swap 1 and 3. You can easily swap 4 and uh, 0. So I can say, instead of carrying couple of pointers, you can always do i comma n minus i minus 1. As simple as it can get. Now, question arises, till how long? If you carefully observe, this is 2. n was 5. So I can say, at any moment, uh, i crosses n by 2, because whenever you're crossing the middle, there's no need to swap. Before that, you can just keep on swapping the left and the right, guys. So, I can again write these in this way that, okay, f of, uh, f of uh, something as i. And I can say if i crosses n by 2, then I can definitely return. Or else I can say, uh, can you please uh, swap a of i, a of n minus i minus 1, correct? And once you've swapped, uh, you can say f of i plus 1. Can you please swap the next guy? And over here on the main, you can uh, simply call the, like, if you can simply take the array and you can simply call f of 0. So basically, uh, first call will be made to f of f of 0, swaps a of 0, a of 4, calls f of 1 swaps a of 1 a of 3 calls f of 2 the moment f of 2 is called if 2 greater than equal to n by 2 which is 5 by 2 true return returns returns and returns but ideally due to these couple of lines the swap happens right thereby your entire array will be swapped correct so in case if you just want to check this out you can just take int n and then you can take scene of n then you can probably take the array as well so easy enough so you can say function of uh, 0 you can pass on the array and pass on the n they will do their job and you can write void f and you can write the index and in order to carry the, carry the array you can take it and you can say int n and it will be like okay at any moment i crosses n by 2 there is no need to do anything you can return or else you can simply swap array of i comma array of n minus i minus 1 once you've done this, you can say f of i plus 1 comma array comma n. So these are the extra parameters that you will carry. Nothing special, just the extra parameters that you will carry. And once you've done this, uh, you can definitely uh, print the array, which is something like for int i equal to 0, i lesser than n, i plus plus, and you can do n c out of array of i. Remember, arrays are passed using reference. So that's okay. 
So if I give one, two, three, four, five, and if I just run this, you see this running, it's automatically swapped. Did you see this? So this is how the swap function works. So I hope you have understood again, a void function, a void function, which a recursion, which does a task and calls the next index uh, to do the next task. So, it's, uh, so in recursion, it's very specific to identify which task does the recursion need to do. Like over here, the recursion has to do a task of swapping. All right, you need to you need to understand that. If you've understood this, recursion is very straightforward. Okay, uh, let's do the next one. The next one is very simple. Uh, check if a given string is palindrome or not. Again, we have to write a functional code over here. Basically, uh, we will be giving the string and the string itself, uh, like the function, we will be giving the string to a function and the function is going to tell us true or false. If the string is palindrome, the function is going to say true, it's a palindrome. If the string is not a palindrome, the function is going to say false. This is not a palindrome. Okay, so you have to write a functional uh, kind of thing. So for an example, let's understand what is a palindrome. So the definition of a palindrome is a string uh, on reversal reads the same. A string on reversal uh, reads the same. That is what we call as a palindrome. For an example, uh, if I write madam, if this is the string, even if you reverse it, even if you apply a reverse function on it, like M, then a, a, then a D, then a, a then a M, you see madam still stays as madam. For an example, one, one, two, double one. Even if you do a reverse, the string still stays one, one, two, double one, like in a string. So a palindrome is a string when on reverse still stays the exact same. So how do you write this? So we can think that, okay, it's pretty much similar to reverse where, uh, because, because why it is uh, similar to reverse? Because M A D A M, we know one thing. If on reversing it is the same, we know how were we reversing. We were reversing something like this. This guy with this guy, right? Then this guy with this guy, correct? So basically the left half and the right half were swapped. So if after reversing, they are correct. If after reversing, they are correct. The left half and the right half has to be identical. That means this M, this M has to be same. This A, this A has to be same and this d is definitely the middle one there's no need to check for it makes sense because if reversal logic was that and if i say on reversing it is correct or like if i say that is how you reverse and if i say the definition of palindrome is after reversing it's same so thereby i can say uh, the left half and the right half have to be same makes sense so how do you uh, how do you check for it again you need to write a functional one remember this you need to write a functional one so can i say can i say I'll write a function because it has to be a functional. So instead of swapping, I say, are they equal? If they are equal, it's fine. Let's do the next check or else tell them that it's not a palindrome because they're not equal. Makes sense because instead of swapping, I can just do a check. Okay. So f of i and while reversing, we know how to do that using single pointer. We say if i is uh, greater than n by 2, Let's come to this case afterwards. Let's keep, come to this case afterwards. So we can be like, instead of swapping, why don't you check if S of I is not equal to S of N minus I minus one. Okay. So if they're not equal, I can say return a true. So return a false. But if they are equal, if these two guys are equal then i'll be like okay please check for i plus one please go and check for the upcoming indexes and whatever that guy says if it says me yes i'm fine if it says me no i'm fine and i'll put a return on here whatever this guy says i'm going to return that but tell how long if this particular guy is being checked again and again and again and reaches the end. Thereby this line is never executed, right? So I can say if, if I reaches at any moment n by two, 
I can return. Yes, I can return a true. Makes sense. Let's understand from Adam and then we'll take another non palindromic string and try to understand that as well. Let's take Madam. So this is the index zero. So you know how the main will call the ma main will definitely call it as f of zero. Please, uh, like whatever f of zero says, please, please do me that. So first time, uh, definitely f of zero goes. First time f of zero call goes. Zero and the last index four. Are they equal? Yes, they're equal. So can you please call for f of one again uh, the if first uh, base case is not executed if s of uh, one is not equal to s of three which is again not the case they're equal so again i'm saying return f of two so the moment i call f of two it says two greater than equal to five by two which is true and i'm saying return a true so this guy returns a true so this becomes true so return a true, true, this becomes true, return a true, so this guy says palindrome, yes, this guy says palindrome, right? So, madam works fine. Let's, uh, let's try to take another example, uh, something like M A D mad sum, mad sum. So it is not a palindrome, why? Because this guy and this guy are not equal. Because on reversing, they will not be equal. So let's see how this works. So at the first time, f of 0 comes again. s of 0, s of 4. Equal. So not equal doesn't work. Return calls f of 1. f s of 1, this one. Not equal to s of 3, this one. Not equal. Return. False. This guy returns a false. Thereby, this guy says false, returns a false. So, you did not go and check the entire one. If you would have checked every index, every index was coming out as true, it would have reached this particular base case. It would have returned it true. But it did not. There was a case where the false was executed. So, it did not move ahead. This is how you can write a functional check for checking a palindrome. Correct? So, again, uh, if I just... Uh, write this let's quickly write this string s is equal to madam okay uh, let's write c out of f of s f of i zero comma s rather so like if i'll write a boolean function definitely boolean function i into index uh, string just uh, you can take it using reference and uh, you can say if uh, i is greater than or equal to s dot size which is the length you can return a true all the checks have been done if s of i is not equal to s of n s dot size minus i minus one you can return a false correct or else you can be right okay can you please go and check the next one and you can return that so if i just write this you will see this coming out as true you see coming out as one because true is one but at the moment i change this madsm this is coming out as zero. See, got this. So this is how you can easily write a functional. So I hope you have understood how to write a void recursive function, how to write a functional recursive function. Now that is what is very important going forward. So I hope uh, you have understood everything in this video. What about the time complexity? How much indexes are you iterating for? Half, because you're just going till the half length. The time complexity is n by two, because you're going till only the half going only till the half right and the space complexity will also be auxiliary stack space nothing like significant like no containers as used internal stack space is n by 2 because half of the recursion calls will be waiting if it's a palindrome correct so that's how the time complexity and space complexity will be and i hope you have understood uh, the entire concept everything so just in case you did please 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 make sure you like this video and if you're new to this channel please 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 do consider subscribing and yeah, with this, let's wrap up this video. Bye-bye. Take care.